Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel, M. Stewart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial, we're going to learn how to paint a sunset on the dock by the lake. A gorgeous sunset landscape scene. So let's get into it. So it's a really easy tutorial today, we're going to use the following colours, they are titanium white, naples yellow, cad yellow, matte orange, matte pink, matte crimson, cobalt blue, iris purple, burnt umber and matte black. Now I have a burnt sienna painted canvas and I've used chalk to create an outline. I thought we'd do a nice easy landscape and I'd paint along at real time today. So we're going to have some mountains in the foreground, we're going to have a big nice sunset lake, we're going to have a little rickety old sort of dock sort of jetty here. We're going to have a nice little bit of foreground and a tree and we're just going to have some nice sunset and nice light effect we might have a duck we might put something else exciting on it so just like always if anyone wants to copy the outline down feel free to do so I'm just going to a little bit speed up the footage just to put some cobalt blue and all I'm doing I'm just putting a rough outline where I want the shadows to be. I'm not going to go over the top I'm just going to put a little bit of cobalt blue just to put in my tree and just roughly where my pier and my mountain is and we'll get started. Now the reason I use cobalt blue is just to put in the shadows as I say. Don't worry if it's scrappy, don't worry if things aren't straight, it's just so you have a rough estimate of where things are going to be and because that dark cobalt blue even if we paint over it you can still see roughly the outline. So all it is just so we know where things like the mountains, the trees and the dock are. So once you're happy with your outline, let's get us started. The first thing we're going to do is get some Naples yellow and some of this lovely purple. Now to make the purple, all you do is get lots and lots and lots of white and some of this iris purple and a dot of black and you get this color. And to make Naples yellow, all you need to do is just get lots and lots of white, a little bit of cad yellow and a dot of black and you get that lovely Naples yellow. So you don't necessarily have to buy these colours, you can just make them. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to paint at real time today. I've had a lot of um, nice emails and comments asking me to do a slower tutorial so I thought we'll do a really really easy beginners tutorial today and we'll do a nice silhouette landscape and I thought what I'll do is I won't speed up the footage at all, we'll just paint along together at real time and I'll do lots and lots of close-ups. I've had a lot of people ask me to do some close-ups and show some brush techniques. And I'll show you some awesome tape techniques you can do to create straight lines later. So we're going to get some of this matte pink and we're going to mix some Naples yellow together. And we're going to add a little bit of that pre-mix colour which is just iris purple, loads and loads of white and a dot of black. So Naples yellow mainly little bit of pink and a tiny bit of the little purple and some white but really we're just trying to create a lovely sort of really subtle pastel pink we're going to paint a pastel color today a pastel palette excuse me so we're going to have nice and really sort of lovely soft colors today So all we're trying to do is just try to create some heat where the sun is going to be and we're using Naples yellow to do that. And then as the sunlight gets a little bit cooler it turns more orange and then it turns more pink. So we're going to get some of that light purple and white. We're going to add some Naples yellow to the mix. So it's predominantly purple and white and Naples yellow. And we're just going to mix the two together and you should get sort of a creamy dull sort of greyish yellowy tone so there we go and all we're gonna do don't worry if your work is streaky don't worry if you can see bits of the burnt sienna underneath because we're using pastel tones that's quite normal they're very very light in tone so that's why the burnt sienna which is a darker color will probably shine through don't worry we'll go over all this we're just blocking it in and we're just trying to gauge the sort of temperature of the sky 
and try to gauge the colors. So what we're trying to work on is mixing our colors and working on our tones. So don't worry if you paint a bit over your tree or you paint over your tree. As I say, the cobalt blue is pretty cool. It will shine through because that color is light and you can kind of just paint it back later. So there we go. Now we're going to get some of that purple and white and we're just going to frame the painting. So what we're doing, if you think about it, we've got the light colors around the sun and the sky is gradually cooling in tone as it goes upwards. So if you think the hotter colors are towards the horizon where the sun is, so they are warm in temperature and in color. And as they, the sky gets cooler, it gets cooler in temperature and cooler in color. So we're trying to add more things like cool purples to emphasize that. So there we go, really nice and easy. Now, if you have a hairdryer, I'm just smoothing this area out just to waste the paint on my brush. But if you have a hairdryer, please give your canvas a dry and we'll have a nice dry canvas and I'll zoom in for you and I'll just show you what we're doing. So all we're doing is just reapplying the same colors that we just mixed. So look, look how much brighter it is. Just adding a second coat, a second coat, excuse me, of the, of the same paint. So all we're doing was just adding Naples yellow. So Naples yellow is just a creamy yellow. It's just cad yellow plenty of white and a dot of black just to suck a little bit of the color out just to make it more pastel so we're going to get some orange and yellow we're going to add a little bit of pink to that and plenty of naples yellow so a little bit of cat orange or matte orange whatever you prefer some naples yellow and a little bit of pink but predominantly naples yellow and a little bit of orange and the pink just makes it a little bit more peach in tone and all we're doing we're just smoothing it while it's wet we're just trying to create nice blending between the tones so really nice and if you just think what we're trying to do is just imply heat around our sun so we're trying to do that with warm colors so think of a color wheel things like yellows oranges pinks reds and even as they get cooler and darker, they go into things like crimson and sort of rusty burnt sienna sort of tones. And for cool colors, we use things like blues and purples to emphasize cools and shadows. So all we're doing is just trying to apply heat around our sun using that lovely pastel peach tone. So if I zoom back out for you, now we've applied the heat around the sun. It's nice and it's a bit brighter. Now we've given it a second coat of paint. So we're going to do the same with the sky. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some pink and Naples yellow. And a little bit of that purple and white. And we're just going to make a really sort of pastel pink now. It's got a little bit of orange from the previous tone. I'm going to add a dot of black. I mean a dot, like a pinprick of black. And all I'm going to do is just make it just underneath the orange, just where the mountains are touching the sky. I'm just going to make it a little bit more pastel and a bit more pink. I love this sort of color pink. So all I'm going to do is just try to frame the sky and where you have, as I say, if you have something like a color wheel at home, you have yellow going into orange, going into sort of pinks or reds. And that's what we're just trying to do. We're just trying to emphasize how the color just changes and gets a bit cooler. And it goes from bright yellow where the sun is into orange, into pink. So as I say, don't worry if you paint over your tree We'll happily put it back later. We're just trying to get all the streaks out of our canvas and just trying to imply it. So we're just doing the same on the clouds. We're just trying to get the transitions from 
the orange into the pink. And what you can do is while it's drying, you can just gently push into the previous color and just smooth it together and it should blend the two tones together. Now we're gonna swap over to a big round headed brush and we're gonna add lots of purple, lots of white and plenty of Naples yellow to get that lovely sort of gray sort of yellow. And all we're gonna do is just block in lots of thick paint, that cooler tone. So the reason it's cooler is because we've added a bit of purple and a bit of white to it and a dot of black. And what that does, again, it just makes the sky look cooler. So you can see here, look, look at the difference between one layer of paint and two layers of paint. So just going over the top, if at home you're painting along, you have streaks in your painting, in your canvas or in your paper, you can always dry it with a hairdryer and just reapply your paint with a little bit more thicker paint, less water, and that will take all the streaks out of your painting. So it's a really easy way to blend and a really easy way just to get rid of horrible streaks or brush marks by just drying your work with a hairdryer and then just reapplying the paint. So because it's a shade lighter than the sun, it looks like it's cooling. So we want to get even cooler by using purples. So now we're just gonna use purple lots and lots and lots of white to make it pastel and a dot of black and we're just going to frame the painting by making the top half and our corners darkest just to make it look like the sun is setting so i'm going to zoom in for you now look we've got a big divide between the two tones so if you go back to the previous tone have a clean brush go back to the previous tone and while the tones are both wet, if you just create X shapes, you can just merge the two tones. So all you do, it doesn't matter what the two tones are, you just go back to the previous tone and you just create X shapes with your round headed brush and that should blend the two nicely together. So you have the darker tone at the top and there you go. So it looks like it's fading off and getting darker and cooler as it gets towards the corners and the top of the painting. So really, really nice and easy. So if we zoom back in and we use some of that lovely sky color that we created, so that was Naples yellow, a little bit of purple and lots of white and a dot of black. And all I'm doing using a small brush, I'm just poking some sky back into our clouds and I'm just gradually smoothing it with my uh, fingers. So I've got a little amount of paint and the canvas is nice and dry and all I'm doing is just smoothing it just to make it look nice and wispy. So just apply some paints, just poking some holes so it looks like some of the sky is coming through the clouds. And anytime there's a little bit too much paint and it's a bit bold and a bit too strong, I just use my finger over the top and I just wipe it into the canvas and it just fluffs it up a little bit and just makes it look less harsh. So just smear it with your fingers, don't be afraid to get messy. There we go. So all I'm doing is just poking some holes and you can just do this at random, it's up to you. You can choose the shapes of your clouds. It's just to add some realism by having a little bit of the sky poking through. And then when we zoom out in a minute, it should look pretty realistic. There we go. Now you can do the same technique with some of the pink. So the previous color that we made, that light pink, that we created the clouds with. I'm just gonna load it up onto a small brush. I'm just gonna do the same technique. I'm just gonna create little squiggles, 
little floating clouds that are coming separating from the main clouds just to create wispy sort of floating clouds sort of have marshmallow sort of wispy bits that come off it so all I'm doing I'm just using pastel colors just to imply some of these lovely wispy marshmallow clouds floating off into all directions of our sky easy peasy okay so we're going to create some darker clouds now so these are the clouds that are getting less sunlight and are further away from the sun so we're going to mix some crimson to make it darker and we're going to add some pink so lots of crimson and some pink and a little bit of that iris cool purple so we're creating a bright purple here and we're just going to get some naples yellow just to dull it and make it more pastel so naples yellow is great for making pastel tones so we're just doing that we're just going to mix it all together and we're going to create quite a harsh shadow tone now these are all the clouds that aren't getting much sunlight so they're darker as they and they have more harsh shadows so all i'm doing is i'm scraping my brush and letting the paint come off and creating wispy clouds so again i'll zoom in for you so you can all see at home so look all i'm doing i'm just loading up my paintbrush so just off screen i'm just loading up my paintbrush i've got a small brush and all i'm doing i'm pushing down against the canvas and i'm just trying to create little random shapes so i'm just scraping back and forth creating little shapes and just pushing down onto the canvas and let the paint just run off my brush and because the canvas has got quite a nice rugged texture it sort of scrapes the paint off and because it kind of runs out on your brush onto the canvas it creates a chalky effect which creates sort of the wispiness of the clouds so i hope i'm explaining that right <laughs> So all I'm doing, I'm just trying to create darker clouds. Now a lot of this is going to be covered by the tree, but it's just to create again a little element of detail. So look, all I'm doing is just pushing down really gently and just letting the paint run out as I push into the canvas. So we'll do some more over here. Now as you can see, the purple is quite overwhelming it brings the clouds forward because we're using a darker color a darker tone that brings these clouds closer and it pushes back our sun but we want to have our sky really far in the background because we're going to have these vast sort of mountains so by using a darker color what it does is it brings things forward which we don't want so I think they're a little bit too harsh and as I say I think because we're gonna have the tree covering up mostly all of them on the um, right hand side I'm just gonna add some in the middle here so I'm just doing the exact same technique but doing that in the middle just to have some that are getting less light so they're darker in color and tone there we go now because they are quite harsh we're going to make a bridge tone now bridge tone is an in-between color between the nice soft pastel highlights and the dark really dark shadows so all i'm going to do is mix some pink and naples yellow i'm going to take some of the dark shadow tone that we just previously mixed I'm just going to make an in-between color so an in-between bridge tone between that soft pastel sort of orangey peach color that we made and that really dark crimsony pink shadows that we made and all I'm doing I'm just glazing over the top I'm just trying to merge the two colors together and all I'm doing, just the same technique that we just did with the shadows, I'm just letting the paint run off my brush and I'm just glazing over the top 
of the really dark shadow tones that are nearest to the sun, creating some more little wispy bits that are coming off. So look, all I'm doing just glazing over the top, creating some little bubbles, some little clouds sort of breaking apart. I'm just trying to trick the viewer's eyes to make the transitions not look so harsh from a really, really nice pastel tone to a really dark sort of shadow tone. And again, by using pastel tones over the top, so look, I'm just going over the top. See this one, for example, it's very harsh. So by going over the top, some of the darker color I'll leave and a lot of it will shine through the lighter color underneath. But what I'm doing, I'm just trying to make the transitions look less harsh. And again, it pushes the clouds back and my sky back because we want it to be in a far distance. And it just looks really pretty. It's a really easy technique. Just glaze over the top. It's a great thing about acrylics. It's almost like a coloring in book. There we go. We can color things in. So to get this off white, all you do is you just get plenty of titanium white and you add a dot of cad yellow to your white just to make it a little bit yellowy, but plenty of white. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put in the hint of a sun in the middle but can you see now how our clouds have been pushed back a little bit? The shadows are not as harsh. And all I'm doing, I'm just going round my sun with some Naples yellow. As I've said in many of the tutorials, sometimes with acrylics, if you want to make your highlights or your colors extremely bright, sometimes you just have to reapply and give the paint maybe two or three coats just to go over it because acrylics pick up the underneath color. So if you're using very things like yellows and whites, sometimes you just have to go over it twice. Now I'm just gonna mix some yellow and some orange together. So lots of Naples yellow, some orange, a dot of pink, but predominantly Naples yellow with a little bit of orange. So I'm just gonna make a really bright peach tone now. And again, look, just going round, just to imply more heat around our sun. Now it's dry by just going over the top, reworking areas. As I say, it's not hard. This tutorial is perfect for beginners. You'd be surprised, even as a beginner, what you can accomplish and what you can paint, because we're gonna use colors to create the realism today. So I'm just adding heat. So look, just going over the top, the exact same colors, just to emphasize the highlights, just to make my sun look really brilliant in color and tone. So by using really bright white with a dab of yellow in it, and then using some of that really bright Naples yellow around it, it's just to emphasize the sun. Now I'm going to mix some pink into my Naples yellow. It's got a tiny bit of orange in it. And I'm just going to warm up and just try to blend the tones together just so the transitions are a lot more smoother. Just so they just merge into one another and you don't notice any jumps in color. So just as we did with the background sky we want to make our clouds, the transition in the clouds from hot colors to cooler colors. We just want to make the transitions all blend. So as I say, it's just taking your time, just relaxing and just making sure everything looks really smooth.
So when you're happy with your sun and clouds, we're just going to smoothen up that area. We're just going to get some Naples yellow and a little bit of that warm peach orange that we just made, just a hint, still predominantly Naples yellow. We're going to swap to a flat headed brush and all we're going to do is just poke some holes again into the sky. So we're just going to make some holes in our clouds and all we're doing, if you think the heat is at the bottom of the horizon where that low sun is, all we're doing, we're just using some heat in the background sky just to match it. So again, look, all I'm doing is thinking where the light would be shining. It would be more bright around the sun. So just in that lower part of the horizon, I'm just poking some holes just so it looks like some of the background sky is shining through. But I'm making it hot in tone and hot in colour by using yellows and oranges. Still very pastel, but it's just to make it look like it all matches. So as I say, the sky is always the hardest bit because you've got to push it back and you've got to make it nice and wispy. So that's why it takes a little bit longer. All things like water and the mountains are actually very, very quick. So don't worry. By learning how to do skies, as I always keep saying to you, and learning transitions and blendings, that's the hardest bit. So if you can master this, you're on your way to doing some really fantastic artwork. So I'm just smoothing up the transitions. So I think the sky looks great. It's nice and far back. It's nice and pushed back in colour. So we want to do the mountains, but we want to make sure that the light is shining in the middle. So we're going to make this area in the middle nice and light just to match our light source with the sun. And we're going to make the edges of the mountains a little bit darker in time. So what we're going to do, we're going to take some of that dark shadow colour that we made for the clouds earlier, which was crimson and pink and a tiny bit of that iris purple. So we're just going to make some more of it. We're going to add some crimson, some pink, a tiny bit of iris purple, and we're just going to add a little bit of heat to it. So we're going to add a little bit of that orangey pink tone and a little bit of Naples yellow, a tiny bit of burnt umber. Now burnt umber and blue, so we're going to add a little bit of cobalt blue, just makes it a little bit darker, but it makes it a little bit more earthy in tone. But we still want it very pastel, so we're just going to mix some Naples yellow. So if you just think browns, blues and blacks make things look more earthy and more realistic. But if you want to make them more pastel once you've mixed it, by just adding the Naples yellow. So we've just added plenty of a Naples yellow. It still makes it very pastely because Naples yellow has plenty of white in it. So all we're doing, we're just going to create some far away hills and we're going to make because these are all the areas of the mountains or the hills in the background that are picking up that sunlight. So again, we want to push them far back. So we're using pastel tones, not harsh colors or tones. We're not using anything like blacks or very, very dark colors because that will bring them towards the viewer. So look at our tree in the foreground. The reason that looks like it's close to you is because it's darker in color and darker in tone. So just think of contrast. You want to have a nice pastel background to make it look far off in the distance, just so we can have darker tones in the foreground and bring them forward. So look, we want to make either side a little bit darker. So think of how we're going to do that. We're going to add things that are cooler in color and tone. So we're going to use blue and purple. And we're going to mix a little bit of pink because we still want some heat and plenty of that Naples yellow to make it back pastel. So blue, cobalt blue, a little bit of iris purple. Iris purple is very cool. And we're making this nice, cool lavender color. And all we're doing while the mountain and hills are wet, we're just blurring it into the previous tone. So just like we did with the sky, we're just trying to match the light in the mountains below. So think of a mirror 
we want everything to match so we want all our transitions to be very seamless but it's very easy this so look if I zoom in for you look we've got the heat under the Sun and all we're doing is using a slightly cooler color either side of that so just think think of a flame you have a really really bright tone and then you have a darker outline around it so we want to do that we want to create really bright light in the middle to look like the Sun is coming over the top and we're going to get cooler either side of it and what you can do is you can go right up to your sky and create nice harsh edges and that will look like the mountains sticking out into the distance now to make it even cooler we're just going to add some of that nice iris purple a little bit of of the Naples yellow but by adding more purple or a little bit of blue and purple we're just going to make the furthest part away from the Sun a little bit darker so there you go We've got a nice dark mountain on the left and we have to match it on the right so think of a mirror we're just trying to make everything look symmetrical everything match so again don't worry if you paint over your tree we'll paint him back later what we want to do is just match the tones just match all the colors just to create the realism so you see there's no detail it's not hard we're just blocking it in really nice and easy take your time if you have any streaks you can always dry your work and go back over with just a thicker bit of paint now if we get the previous tone that nice orange that we used and we just swap to a smaller brush so just a slightly smaller brush what we can do is just imply the sunlight and some texture on our mountains by just adding some highlights so think where the Sun would be coming over the Sun would be coming over the tops of those hills so it'd make the edges of those hills very very bright so think of a light coming over the top so by just using again a lighter tone we can trick the viewers eyes and just create the illusion of detail without any detail by just using realistic colors So all I'm doing, I'm leaving slight gaps in the underpainting. So I'm leaving gaps in the color that we've just done underneath it, the darker tone. And by just implying some highlights and leaving gaps in between the highlights, it creates the illusion of bumps and terrain and rocks on your mountains. So look, just by leaving gaps in between, the darker purple shines through and you have gaps in between the brighter highlights that just gives the impression of far away mountains so you don't need much paint you just can do the smeared little trick that I use with my fingers that just softens areas up by using very little paint just taking your time relaxing just think where you would have mountain crevices and rocks and caves and just imply that so it's up to you how detailed you want to go I'm just gonna do a little bit because obviously we're gonna have that tree cover some of that mountain up so we're going to create a lighter highlight so we've got this lovely peach tone we've got the darker tone so we're going to add a little bit of that orange we just previously made for what we just had on the clouds just so it all matches and again all I'm doing I'm using a smaller brush I'm just glazing over the top and just making these highlights more brighter so it's really really easy same technique over and over again by leaving gaps in the previous color to allow shapes to appear and just using a lighter tone where I think the sunlight is going to be I can just add extra texture and extra brighter highlights but it's still very pastel and they still match the light in the sky because we're using the same colors 
So it's just to imply a bit more sunlight coming over that ridge. So it looks fantastic. Really easy, really easy technique. So we've added the hint of detail without any detail. We've just used color. And we've got this nice texture. We've got this nice darker color either side. So we've got a nice central focus. So if you can, please measure a straight horizon and we'll use some painting tape and we'll start working on the water. So we've got this lovely pier and we want to have sunlight coming down because so, what we want to do is we want to have the pier and the sun being the central focus so people's eyes are drawn to the middle. So we're going to block in the water first so we're going to take plenty of Naples yellow and we're going to get some orange and a little bit of pink. So Naples yellow predominantly, some orange and Naples pink and we're going to make a really nice warm bright tone to match the heat. So we're going to have sort of the brightest tone that we had around our clouds and the sun. We're going to create that in the water. So again, I've just swapped to a round heady big brush just to block it in. So I'm using a much bigger brush. I've got plenty of paint on my brush. And all I'm doing, just like we did with the sky, I'm just blocking it in Again, don't worry about streaks or anything. You can always go over the top by drying it and just reapplying it. But try to have some painting tape. Painting tape is literally a dollar or a pound in a shop. It's just tape that's really, really um, easy. You can buy it in any art shop. I kept getting hairs when I was painting today. I think my brush was shredding or my dog was molting, but I kept getting really annoying hairs. It's not me because I haven't got any hair. <laughs> but um, yeah, unfortunately, if you see me stopping to pick away at the canvas while we're painting along at real time, it's simply because my, my brush was shredding hairs and it was really annoying me. So yeah, don't worry if you have streaks. Look, you can see some of the underpainting, some of that burnt sienna shining through, but don't worry, we can go over the top. Now we just add a tiny bit more pink because just like the mountains above, as the sunlight moves to the left and the right away from the centre, it's going to be a little bit darker in colour and tone. So what we're going to do, we're just going to add a tiny bit of pink and purple, just a tiny bit, just to make it look darker. So there we go, just a slightly darker tone. And again, what that does, just like we did with the sky, just like we did with the mountains, we're trying to make the middle point, the central point, and by having it brighter in colour, we have people's eyes looking towards the middle and also it matches the light. So just what we've done on the left, we just want to, again, like a mirror, we want to match it on the right. So all we're doing, we're just blocking it in. Don't worry if you cover up your tree, don't worry if you cover up your pier, that's quite normal. We're going to go over the top later and I'll show you some tricks with chalk and with um, with tape so you can get your pier nice and straight. I'll show you little tricks so you can paint straight lines. So look, I've got hairs everywhere. I don't know what it was. So just block it all in so we've got this nice heat. And then if you dry it and just like before, if you want to go over it, if you have some streaks, look, I've got plenty of streaks. All I'm doing, I'm just going over the top. And as I said to you lots and lots of times, acrylics always dry darker. So sometimes you just need to reapply the paint just to make your water or your highlights a little bit brighter. So by just giving it a second coat, it will seem a little bit brighter on camera here, but it should dry exactly the same color. So just try to take out all those streaks by using more paint and a little bit less water. So only have a tiny bit of water on your brush so the brush glazes and glides over the canvas. But by having more paint and less water, the more water you add to your brush, the more streaks you'll get. So try to use plenty of paint So all I'm doing, I'm just going over the top. I'm just, as I said before, we're almost colouring it in. 
We're just going over the top, just trying to take out any streaks, just glazing our canvas. Super easy. So again, take your time. If you need to pause the tutorial, just pause it, but just try and get all the streaks out of your first base color with this nice pastel orange. And we'll move on to the next color. So we're gonna take plenty of Naples yellow and we're gonna add, <laughs> trying to get the hairs out of my, my paint. And we're gonna add some of the purple and white we mixed. So purple, lots and lots of white and Naples yellow. And we're gonna to try to make the same color as the middle of the sky. So see this color? And all we're gonna do, so think of a mirror, we're just gonna to try to blend that into the previous tone. Just while it's wet, we're just going to lather on the paint. Again, don't worry about the streaks. If you get hairs like me, try to keep calm. <laughs> try to chill. So it's a good thing when I'm filming these, it's on mute, because otherwise you'd hear me swear. <laughs> Again, don't worry about the streaks. We can go over that in a minute. We just want to cover up all the base tone of the burnt sienna. So if you're painting on a white canvas, that's totally fine. But just be aware when you're using pastel light colors, sometimes you could have the white canvas showing through and you won't realize as much. So that's why I always paint my canvas that horrible burnt sienna color is because I can see where I've missed. So look, if we dry our work with a hairdryer, we can just reapply some colors. So that all I'm doing, I'm just reapplying some of the color in the middle. I've added a hint of Naples yellow to it, just to make it a little bit more pastel than the previous tone. And I'm just going down the middle and I'm just creating the impression of shining light. So just by adding a tiny bit of Naples yellow to your pastel orange, you can make it a little bit more pastel and a little bit more lighter in tone. And look, all we're doing, we're doing these X shapes again. Bob Ross is the expert of X shapes with his brush. So if you ever want to learn, no matter how good you are at painting, if you ever want to learn how to blend, Bob Ross is an absolute expert. So that's look, all we're doing. When I was young, I used to always watch Bob Ross. So again, don't worry about streaks. We just want to create the colors. So we're going to take some Naples yellow and plenty of that purple and white. And we're just going to go over this area, which is now dry. And we're just going to take away the streaks. And we're just going to work the colors into each other. Just try to make everything smoother. Think of water, it's so smooth in texture. With nature, you don't notice the transitions. It's so perfect. So we want to just gently ease up on the brush. So if you push down hard at the bottom of the painting where the water meets the bank. So Naples yellow, plenty of purple and white. Load up your brush. And at the bottom of the painting, look, if you push down a bit hard, get plenty of that paint and create X shapes. And as you move upwards, just ease off of the pressure, let the paint run out and it'll gently glide into the other color. So you ease up on the pressure, let the, the brush just touch the surface of your painting and just sort of glaze it. And you'll get that chalky residue and it will look nice and wispy and it will look like the colors are merging into one another. Really easy technique. So all we're gonna do now at the bottom of the painting, we're gonna add purple and white only. So no Naples yellow, because we're gonna to try to match this area of the sky. So purple and white only. As I say, you can add a dot of black if you choose to, just to suck out a bit of the color. And all we're doing while it's wet, we're gonna do the exact same technique. So push hard at the bottom of the painting, 
just ease up on the pressure of pushing down let the brush just glide create x shapes and just merge the colors into one another and you should have some nice seamless transitions in color look at that how easy was that and we're going to go back to our bright orange with plenty of naples yellow and we're going to just glaze the top and just try to create the shimmer of the sunlight coming down onto our lake so our sunset is perfect in the background and now our water our lake the transition is looking fantastic so again really easy nice nothing hard just plenty of brush techniques and because of that lovely cobalt blue is dark you still see the hint of our tree and the hint of our pier so if we remove our painting tape ta-da we have a lovely straight horizon don't worry if you've got any little chalk marks or any little bit of burnt sienna shining through you can always dry it again with a hair dryer and just go over the top that's the wonderful thing about chalk look you can just lick your finger or use the baby wipe and just wipe it away and it was like it was never there so we've got our pier here and we've got all these little gaps so don't worry we'll go over them but i think we should do our tree first so let's do our tree first so we're going to just before we do our tree i think we just block in the bottom of our painting so we're going to get some burnt umber and cobalt blue and we're just going to create an off black dark color so we don't want to use black just yet so plenty of burnt umber and some cobalt blue will make a really dark shadow tone so a really dark color but it's not quite black because again black is almost like a silhouette we're going to save that for our pier and a bit of our tree later we want to use very dark tones to bring that bank forward towards the viewer so all i've done is just lifted the canvas up on the easel i'm just blocking it in where that edge is a little bit wet that's why we've got a little bit lighter color just where it's merging in with the light purple but don't worry as I say we're just blocking in the reason I've done a little bit higher edge on my left hand side is because I want to put my signature there so I'm using again look just in this corner I'm just using a dark color just so when I sign it uh, um, later on at the end of the painting at the end of the tutorial I've got a nice prominent signature so I need a dark color just to have my nice bright signature there so we're going to get some cobalt blue and plenty of burnt umber and we're just going to mix them together and we're going to use a flat headed brush so we're going to use a really flat brush so think of a straight line and we're just going to create a big tree just to have a focus point and create some detail so try to have bits of water on your brush because otherwise see how mine ran out of paint as it went down and the texture of the canvas shines through so you can see that you can see all the little gaps so try to have lots of water and then just put plenty of paint on your wet brush and just work your way down. I think because my background was a little bit wet still, that's why we've got this sort of lighter tone here at the bottom. But don't worry, as I say, you can dry it and go over it. If you're very nervous about painting over your lovely background, you can always dry your work before you get to the tree stage. So always dry your work with a hairdryer. Have plenty of baby wipes on hand. And if your tree goes wonky, so look, that's a flat brush. If anyone's asking what a flat brush is, it's just a flat headed brush. So think of a flat headed screwdriver. Very similar, just it's got flat. And because it's flat, it's very easy to draw straight lines. So perfect for trees. Yeah, so if you're worried about painting the tree or anything like that and you're a bit nervous because obviously we're going over the top of our lovely pastel background. If you dry your work with a hairdryer and you make a mistake, you can always just use the baby wipes to wipe off the, work, the, the tree and just wipe it away and just restart and just paint over it again. So it's a really good idea to always dry your work in each stage. 
So when you're adding things that are darker like blacks or dark blues and browns over the top, if you're very if you make a mistake, you'll see me later make mistakes, I'll show you when we're doing the branches. If the background is dry, you can just wipe off your branches or anything you make a mistake. So there we go. A nice blocked in tree, just in a dark tone. So as I say, if you've got anything you don't like, you can just go over the top. So look, all I'm doing, I'm using that really straight edge just to create a nice thick branch. I'm not going to put any leaves on my tree. I'm going to make it bald like me. I'm just going to make some big branches coming off at first and I'll show you how to do realistic spindly branches in a minute. Now the reason I'm not going to put any leaves on it is simply because I don't want it to cover up the background. So if I zoom in for you and we're going to use this really long headed brush as a fine liner. So again these you can buy packs of brushes that contain the flat headed brush and the fine liner. They're very good investment. You can buy them at any art shop you probably get a pack of brushes they don't have to be a certain make just for say five to ten dollars five to ten pounds and they'll contain one of these fine liners and a flat headed brush I recommend you getting a fan brush which I'll show you on different tutorials because they're very helpful for trees and all we're doing we're using the really thin edge of this brush because it's so thin to create really fine branches. So again, the brush is doing all the work for me. I've wetted the brush end just so it flows nice and smooth when I apply the paint to the canvas because it's got lots of water. So you can see me dabbing my hand to make sure the nib of the end of the brush is nice and moist and wet. And all I'm doing is loading it up with paint and then go over the top to create these really thin branches. So there you go. So just again, just try to create shapes, try to create little Y shapes. So all we're doing, we're just trying to create detail. As I say, we're not going to put any leaves on her today because obviously I want this tutorial to be very easy so everyone at home can follow along. And what we'll do, we'll do some more forest tutorials. So look, if you've made a mistake, you can just use a baby wipe and wipe away a branch. And it's gone. Look at that. So look, if you make a mistake and your background is nice and dry, just please use a baby wipe or a damp towel just to wipe it away and you can always if you do get a smudge just dry your work and just paint over the background where you've just made a mistake so again just relax take your time try to have a steady hand Put plenty of water on you, the end of your brush, load it up with paint and then just use the thinness of the brush to do all the work for you and get these lovely spindly branches. So watch, if you push down really gently, let the thinness of the brush, just let all the paint run out, dab it in water load up the paint and then where it's just run out just use that really thin nib of the paintbrush just go over the top and there you go and then to have branches you just do the same technique just have really really thin edges at the end of your branches so more thicker as it joins the other branch and just let the paint run out and just have a really thin edge so look it's almost like a needle this brush and just let the paint run out and just have a really fine edge there we go so 
all I'm doing is just trying to create wonky branches, really thin ones coming off. Just make them really spindly. So dip it in water, load up your brush. There we go. So as I say, just take your time. Now please, um, in the comments below, if you prefer these longer step-by-step -step real time tutorials let me know and if you prefer the quicker speeded up more um, time-lapse videos let me know I'm going to try to do bits for everyone because I appreciate opinions vary lots of people prefer much more to the point quicker tutorials because they I appreciate they don't have much time and other people want much more in detailed um, more close-ups, more brush techniques. So I'm going to try to do both. But feedback for me is really, really good. There's no such thing as bad feedback. So please let me know in the comments below. And please, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. The channel is growing, which is I really appreciate everyone. Thank you so much for all the support. The channel is doing extremely well now. And it's growing every day. there we go just kind of come off and I'm letting that brush do all the work for me so these brushes are perfect for things like grass branches things like fur for animals anything that is very thin so branches and detail these brushes are fantastic So as I say, it's not hard, it's just time consuming. So if you ever watch these people who paint super photorealistic trees, this is all they're doing. They're just relaxing, taking their time and doing every branch with this technique using these brushes. So as I say, if you're a beginner, we just want to create sort of spindly vein like branches so take your time and when you're happy with your tree and its branches we'll move on to the next stage so i think i have one little one here just coming down just have a little central focus point under the sun i think that's pretty much done so that was easy enough so I'm going to get some pink, I'm going to get some orange, a little bit of burnt umber. So pink, orange and burnt umber. And I'm going to mix it into my burnt umber actually, look better. And I'm just going to go back to the flat headed brush and just on the left hand side, as that side is going to be facing the sun, just going to put a little bit of an edge on my tree bark and I'm just again leaving tiny little gaps in the underpainting excuse my hands in the way but all I'm doing is just creating some highlights up the left hand side because that's where the sunlight is shining so once I move my hand you can see there just left some gaps so the dark color and if you're like me and you don't like some of your branches, look, you can always just take some of the sky colour and just paint over them. So if there's any you didn't like, that's what I was saying to you earlier, you can just paint over them. Now this is the trick I was going to teach you all. This is a really easy trick. If you are not very confident about painting a straight line, the first thing you can do is use chalk. First thing is great about chalk is you can move things about. So unlike a pencil, if you don't like something, 
with chalk you can just apply it and it doesn't leave any marks so it's perfect for creating outlines now if you have some painting tape what you can do is you can line up the painting tape so as you can see here and you can create sections that you can fill in and they will be totally straight very nervous about painting or drawing freehand and you don't know if you can draw straight lines for things like buildings in this case it's our dock or our pier what you can do just like we do with her the horizon we can line up some painting tape either side and we can fill in the gap and create a nice straight line so all I'm doing I'm using this very cheap painting tape that is very easy to take on and off so it doesn't rip off all your paint and all we're going to do is I'm going to mix some blue and black, sorry, excuse me, the blue and burnt umber that we mix for our shallow color of our tree. And all I'm going to do is look, fill in the gap. So I've got tape either side of the gap. I've got a slightly bigger gap towards the left and it's getting thinner as it moves to the right just to create the perspective just to make it look like it's fading off and all I'm doing I'm using tape so watch if I pull the tape off I've got a nice straight line and I pull the tape off again look at this how easy was that now if you dry it with a hairdryer before you apply the second layer of tape we can do the exact same thing so again I've got a nice straight line by just using the tape and I've dried my painting so if I apply the tape over the top of the bit we just painted I won't get it taking it off the paint so I'm just going to mix some purple and pink together and a tiny bit of burnt umber and a tiny bit of cobalt blue just to make a nice dark sort of purpley color I've got this painting tape here I've dried my painting so now that I apply some more tape, so look, I just apply more tape over the top and because it's dry, it won't take the paint off. Create a nice perspective. So it's just a bit thicker. See, it's a bit thicker on the left hand side and it's just getting thinner as it moves towards the point of our dock or our jetty or our pier, whatever you pronounce it. So there we go, look at that. We're just filling in the gap. The tape is taking away. Look at that, we create a nice straight line. We take away the bottom. And then we just got a darker tone just for the edge of the pier. And we've created a nice straight dock. Look at that, how easy was that? Now, I'm going to paint a bit freehand, I'm going to do it deliberately a bit wonky because, oh my brush split there so I'm just going to use a thinner brush because I want my pier to look all rickety and old and sort of haggard because I want it to look like a little sort of fishing dock like a little pier that people stand on, I want it to look quite weathered so rather than do that trick with the tape I'm just going to paint freehand, but what you can do is if you are nervous and you don't know how to do straight lines or perspective, you can always use that tape just to paint these bits in. So if you don't want to use your freehand, if you're worried that your hand shakes or you just can't do straight lines or you want it perfect, you're a perfectionist, just use the tape for these ridges. So all I'm doing is I'm just painting with that blue and brown that we used for the tree I'm just using that to come down with a flat headed brush to create the legs and sort of the nice wood of this little dock so again take your time let the brush do the work for you but as I say, I'm going to make mine look a bit ropey rather than have it so straight because I want my dock to look quite weathered. I think it gives it character, <laughs> like me. <laughs> and 
And don't be afraid about having chalk shining through. Once your paint is dry, you can just wipe that away. So as I say, chalk is brilliant for creating outlines and moving things about. So if you want to add things to a painting and you're unsure if it will work, you can always use chalk to create an outline before you commit to it. So unlike pencil, where it leaves a horrible mark and it can ruin your pastel colors, by using chalk, if you made the pier too big or too small, you can just wipe it away and just reapply the chalk and just create a new outline. So once you're happy with your legs, I think I'm just going to make the left hand side just a teeny bit wider up here on the left hand side just to give it a bit of thickness to make our dock look a bit bigger. So I'm just going to slightly make the left hand side a bit wider there. I'm going to load up my brush with paint. So I'm going to get plenty of paint and I'm going to do a reflection. So all I'm doing, I'm just tipping my brush diagonally and because it's flat, I'm just using the flatness of my brush to create little squares. So all I'm doing is just letting the paint run out and I'm just creating a shadow. So if you imagine the sunlight is beaming down onto our dock and that's casting a dark shadow into the water. So this is the reflection in our lake. So all I'm doing, I'm just using the edge of that brush just to create the reflection. So again, look, mine's a bit wonky here. My reflection's a bit wonky. So we can rub it out if we don't like it, if our painting is dry. So first, before I change it, I'm just going to paint a little bit of these ripples so I'm just trying to match the perspective with the shadow so I'm just using the same colors just pushing down with my flat headed brush just shading it in So I want to keep the water very tranquil and very um, flat because I want it to look really peaceful, this piece, this landscape. So we're not going to put any ripples or anything, but we are going to create some reflections. So I'm just going to add a little bit more paint, just, just plenty of water. Just come down with the brush. So again, it's the brush doing all the work for me. Now I think this top bit here is a bit wonky, so I'm just going to use a baby wipe. So this is what I was saying about if you just dry your work at each stage, so once you're happy with a stage, dry it. If you make a mistake like moi, if you make a mistake, you can just use a baby wipe. And the great thing about baby wipes are they can just take off the previous colour and you won't lose your background painting because you dried it beforehand. So I'm just going to make my shadow underneath a bit straighter because it was a bit wonky so all I'm doing I'm just trying to match the perspective so by just making the shadow more straighter it will just look more realistic and less wonky I'm just putting my legs back in because obviously I would just rub them away when I used the baby wipe so again just using the flat head of that brush just coming down there we go it's a bit more straight now I'm going to add a tiny bit of black to the mix so blue brown and a little bit of black because I want to make the underneath more silhouetted and a lot darker to make it stand out so these are the areas of the pier that are hardly getting any sunlight because they're the furthest from the sun and some of the legs are a bit wonky and they're sticking out. You can see sort of the underneath joints. So I'm just using some black 
with the blue and the burnt umber just to make these legs underneath a little bit darker and to make them more silhouetted. Now if you tip your brush sideways, what you can do is just create little squiggles coming down with that darker tone to create the illusion of ripples and reflections of your legs of your pier or your dock. So all I'm going to do is just use the dark tone to create the legs. Just going to come underneath it. Just trying to create the illusion again of detail without really using any detail. Just trying to create a straight edge. Create some shadow underneath here. And if you tip your brush diagonally, you can just create sort of the illusion of planks. So what I'm doing is just going diagonally. Again, the brush is doing all the work for me because it's nice and straight. And all I'm doing is just getting thinner as I move towards the right. And I'm just creating some planks just so it looks, again, more detailed. So look, to do the ripples, you just tip your flat brush sideways and just create little ripples coming down. So look, all I'm doing is just creating little zigzags and they give the impression of little ripples and reflections in our shadows. So just the illusion of some added detail. Just using the very tip of my brush just to create zigzags. So look, here we go, really easy. So look, zig 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 zag, like the Spice Girls, zig a zig -a. <laughs> So there you go. So just come down towards the bottom of the painting. So I'm just using the very tip, the very corner of my brush. I'm just pushing down very gently to create little sort of zigzags. So again, really easy technique. Just take your time. If you've dried it beforehand and you make a mistake, you can always just wipe it away. I'm just gonna make these legs a bit darker. So same technique. Using some black and some blue and some burnt umber. Using the edge of the brush just to create fine lines. There we go. Do some at the top as well just to match it. And because we've done the lighter colour first, you can see quite clearly with the planks on the actual dock itself. By having the lighter colour first, when you add these darker colours over the top and you sort of outline them, it looks like the light is shining on one area. And you can just swap to a fine liner. And as I say, if you want to make them more straight or make the tops less broken, you can do. So all I'm doing, I'm just using a thinner brush rather than a flat brush, just to go over the top and just make the tops a little bit smoother, look like more wooden posts. Some I'm going to have quite rugged. 
So I'm gonna have a mixture. And because we've got the lighter tone as the reflection, and then we've got these darker ripples over the top, they're able to stand out. So again, it just gives the illusion of detail. So our sunset is looking fantastic, and our lake is starting to come alive. So I'm gonna mix some pink, some cobalt blue, and some Naples yellow to create a nice warm purple. And I'm just going to darken up my corners of my mountains because I want the viewer to look straight down the middle at the end of that pier towards our sun. So again, just making the edges of our mountains a little bit darker. So again, don't worry if you paint over your branches, you can just reapply the paint in a minute. But all we want to do is just make these edges a little bit darker. Just to again imply that the light in the middle is our central point that where we're looking towards. So there we go. And I'm just gonna get some of the previous color we mixed. So that was pink and Naples yellow and just a tiny bit of purple. So more pink and Naples yellow than anything. And I'm just gonna make the transition look less harsh by just gently glazing this area that's nice and dry into that darker color we just applied. So just look, I'm just, making the transition look seamless by just merging the two and that looks really pretty look at that it looks excellent so as i say acrylics are really forgiving you can just glaze over the top now this is what i was saying about chalk i thought why not add a guy fishing because i was going to have a duck here on the right hand side but i want the central point to be the sun and the end of the pier so i thought why not apply a little dude having a fish on the lake so i use chalk because as i say i wasn't sure what i wanted to do and i think chalk's a great way to move things about so i'm going to get some yellow some orange and some pink and at first before we paint our little dude in what we're going to do is i'm just going to make this central point a bit brighter so by using yellow cad yellow some orange and a tiny bit of pink i'm just going to make this area a little bit more brighter because i want the viewer to look straight down the edge of the pier i want them to be sort of lost in the little picture so as I say, with chalk, it's really, really good to have things before you commit to them. So you can see if things work or don't work. So all I'm doing, I'm just glazing over the top of that cloud that we did earlier. I'm going to add some Naples yellow to the mix. And I'm just going to make the transition of the sun again a little bit brighter and a little bit smoother. Just a bit more yellow. There we go, it looks like it's glowing a bit more now. So again, it's just spending five minutes going over the top. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the exact same trick on the water to match it. So we're gonna get orange and pink and some Naples yellow, tiny bit of cad yellow as well, just to make it really luminous. So the cad yellow, Unlike the Naples yellow is very bright. So we're gonna make this really bright peach tone. And all we're gonna do, we're just gonna glaze over the top of our dry lake. And we're just gonna match the heat of that sun bellowing down. So all we're doing, we're creating the illusion of light shimmering on the water by using tones, by using colors and using the warm tones with the orange and the yellow to imply light. It's a really cool trick. So 
So all I'm doing, I'm hardly putting any pressure on my canvas. I'm just glazing over the top. As I say, like a crayon, I'm just shading over the top. Hardly any pressure on my dry canvas to glaze over the top and create the illusion of this shimmer. So you see, it just makes it look so much prettier, more vibrant, and it gives you something to look as a viewer towards. So we want them to look towards the middle of the painting. Okay, excellent. So we're gonna get some ye Naples yellow, a little bit of Cad yellow, a little bit more Naples yellow. And we're just gonna make a brighter yellowy version, so less orange now. I'm gonna wipe away most of the paint Got a dry brush and then come come straight down from the sun. So again, we want to stay quite centre, and we're just going to put a bit more of a glimmer, a bit more of a shimmer onto our water. So look, we're just doing the exact same technique. We're just really gently letting. We've got hardly any paint on our brush. We're just glazing over the top to create this illusion of a reflection of our sun. So we've got this lovely glow onto our lake. So I'm really gently, hardly any pressure, just to create this glow. And then finally, we're just gonna get some Naples yellow wipe away most of the paint, come straight down, and just make that middle glow even more prominent, even more vibrant. So again, it's not hard, it's just taking your time. Just all these added little bit, extra bits of detail just make the composition all come together. So our sunset lake is looking fantastic. So we're gonna get some of the cool purple and we're gonna get some crimson now and some pink. We'll add a little bit of burnt umber, just a little bit. And a, so a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of blue just to suck a bit of the color out. We're gonna make a tiny dot of black, not too much because we don't want to overpower him. We're going to create a nice warm colour. So by adding a bit of Naples yellow to it, again, it makes it more pastel. And what we're going to do, once it's all mixed together, we're going to swap to a smaller brush and we're going to paint our little man having a fish, a little person. So we're going to swap to a smaller brush. We're going to load up paint. And what we're going to do, we're going to paint in a lighter colour first just to sort of gauge the temperature. So again, just cover up the chalk and paint in the little person having a fish. So all I'm doing is I'm blocking him in and just blocking in the silhouette of the guy. to say I don't want to go too detailed but the reason I'm adding a sort of lighter color first is because the sunlight is going to be coming and hitting his right hand side so what I'm going to do is make the right hand side this color this light sort of pastel purple and I'm going to make the left hand side more silhouetted and create again just like we've done with the tree, just a little bit of extra realism without much hard detail. So I'm just going to paint his legs in for you and I'll zoom in so you can get a, a better view. So 
So with the fishing rod, we'll swap back to our really thin brush. So all I'm going to do is just paint the handle, but I won't paint the actual thin bit. We'll leave that for a minute. So we're going to make a darker shadow colour now. So we're going to add some blue to the mix we just made. And some black. We're going to add a little bit of crimson because it's still got some heat from the sun. So there we go, that's a nice colour. So predominantly cobalt blue. So there we go. And all we're going to do is we're going to make the left hand side a little bit darker than the right hand side. So if you imagine the sunlight is in his face, he's facing towards the horizon and he's facing towards the sunlight. So by using a small brush, we're going to outline the left hand side and we're going to make it a bit darker. You can be wearing shorts, why not? <laughs> So we're just going to make the left hand side a little bit darker with the more bluey tone. So there we go. So all we're doing, we're just shading him in. I'm just going to use that brush to do the handle of our fishing rod. So by again just using a smaller brush you can just add more finesse. It's just easier to do more detail. I'm just going to mix the two tones together. And I'm just going to blur them together. So again, I'm just like we did with the sky and the clouds. I'm just bridging the warm highlight color that we made first with the dark shadow color by mixing the two together and just bridging them together. So we've got a middle tone. So we've got the dark on the left a middle tone and then we've got the highlight on the right hand side where the sun's hitting him and you can go back and just smooth it over so again just to make your transitions look more smooth and we'll just get some of the lights color and on the right hand side we'll make him more brighter We just while it's all wet, we're just smoothing it in just to make again make the transitions look smoother. It's really easy. So it just looks like the light is coming round him. So again, just like we, we did with the mountains, we just highlight in one side just to match the sunlight. Easy trick. So that is looking really cool, but he's a little bit too pastel. He's a little bit too blending in with the background. So what we're going to do, we're going to swap to our thin brush that we used for our branches. And we're going to add some black to create a more silhouette. So like we did with the legs of our dock, and we're going to use that to create the end of our fishing line. So because it's thinner, we can cheat and use that brush to create a really nice thin fishing line. So there we go. Again, the brush is doing all the work for us. So I'm going to just arch it over. We're going to come just below the horizon. Just so when we add our fish, we're going to add a little fish on the end of it. He stands out simply for the fact 
He's against the bright orange background. He'll stand out more than I think if he was where the mountains would be. So I'm just going to draw a little fish, why not? I don't know why here I was trying to draw with this really thin brush, but it's very impossible because the brush is just so thin, it's hard to actually draw anything. So I was just trying to create an outline of a little fish, but I put way too much water on the brush here and it kind of splodged and created a fat fish. So when I tried to dry it, it smeared. So what I did, you can see there's a little smudge on his fin there. What I did, I just dried it with a baby wipe, swapped back to a thicker brush, and just went and reapplied the paint. So again, if you ever make a mistake, just dry it with a hairdryer. I'll use a baby wipe just to wipe it away and then just dry it. And you can just reapply paint just over the top. So all I'm doing, I've got his mouth wide open, got his little fin, his little tail. Just gonna come down, just make that edge a little bit darker. There we go, easy peasy. And while I've got that dark color, just with a little bit of black added to the mix, I'm just gonna outline the left-hand side and make the silhouette of him more prominent. Because I think he's a bit too flat. So again, just using some black in the mix. We've kept our darkest darks to the last minute. We've kept it for the foreground. We can bring that towards the viewer and it'll bring it closer towards the viewer and it'll push back the mountains and things into the far background. So all I'm doing, just making certain areas a little bit darker, using a little bit of black. So still got plenty of cobalt blue and burnt umber in the mix, but it's still got black in it. And I'm just gonna darken up the left hand side. So we've got more shadow on the left. There we go. And we're just popping back to our really, really thin brush. We're just gonna put some finishing touches. We're literally just gonna draw some grass. So all I'm doing, I'm just using that really thin brush. I'll zoom in for you in two seconds, just to create the impression of grass on our bank. So watch, what I'm doing, just using the really thin brush just to create some squiggles, just the heads of some grass, just to make our bank look more realistic. So again, just spending two minutes just finishing everything off, just implying detail just to make everything come together. So this is all the rugged grass just on the riverbank. And just to finish her off here in the middle, I'm just gonna take my fine liner, gonna use a little bit of Naples yellow, and I'm just gonna make these highlights look a little bit brighter. Now we've got our fish and we've got our end of our pier just want to make the highlights a teeny bit brighter so as I said to you at the beginning acrylics dry sometimes quite flat and if you want to make your highlights more vibrant sometimes you just got to apply a second coat of paint so I'm using the rubbing technique <laughs> and again all I'm doing is just glazing the same Naples yellow underneath our sun. 
and I think she's finished. So we have created this gorgeous sunset lake acrylic painting. You've learned how to do a central point with the sunset. We've learned how to paint this gorgeous lake. We've done a lovely, beautiful sunset here in the background. We've got this gradient in our sky. You've learned how to do a transition in your clouds. You've learned how to do mountains with highlights. We've got this lovely light effect on the lake water itself. You've learned how to do a tree and its branches, how to paint a pier, how to do grass. And you've even learned how to do ripples and straight lines using the tape trick and our lovely silhouette of our man fishing. So gorgeous painting here. Thank you so much for watching along this acrylic painting tutorial. I've really enjoyed painting along real time with everyone today. So please like and subscribe if you haven't done already. My name is Murray. There should be plenty of painting tutorials coming up on screen now. So take care of yourself, guys, and happy painting. See you soon. Bye.